Okay, so we are going to be talking about ears. And ears oftentimes look like a weird question mark. Maybe more like this. But then it goes this way. And then there's a hole. And that's how you draw ears. <laughs> now, we're going to be talking about ears. And I can't spell correctly. But it really does look like a question mark. The ear does. Very question mark like. So, let's go ahead and draw some. Uh, let's do a nice purple. And we'll talk, there's not really too much to talk about with ears, quite honestly. So this video might not be as long. Um, they're really just a few basic forms kind of stacked up into each other and, and, and sort of overlapping each other. As always, I usually start with like a big shape. I'm going after this one right now. And I would say I don't really even necessarily have any quick tips on, on drawing them other than maybe a couple of these drawings will look a little bit crude just as I explain some of this stuff. So one quick tip to realize is like, you know, the ear is broken down into sections, right? We've got these few different sections that kind of make it up. The ears are very planar as well. But one main section of the ear is this top part, which is called the helix. And that usually goes down and folds back around. You'll see many different variations of ears. This one that I'm drawing right now is pretty consistent, stays consistent all the way around. If we look right below it, you can see this one actually comes out and folds in front of another piece. Um, you know, kind of, the, it's still the same piece, still the same shape, but it just has a much different kind of curve to it. Depending at the angle that we look at the ear from, we get this central piece, which is the tragus. Sorry, the, no, this is the anti-helix, and then anti-tragus, and then tragus right here. Um, it always weirds me out how close that sounds to my name. It just sounds like it's somebody who's not saying my name right. But it is <laughs> tragus. That is this part, this part. Anti-helix is this tube, and then anti-tragus is down in this lower section. So the anti-tragus and anti-helix are kind of connected together, and then we have the lobe, obviously. But <clears throat> something that helps me with ears, if we're drawing it more from like a top-down angle, um, Say we're looking down on the ear. This top piece really does go down. And kind of overlap. And then down to the low, which would be down here. And then we have tragus right here. And then the concha, which is the hole of your ear. Then we've got the anti helix, which pokes out. A little bit hard to draw this from a down angle, but these forms 
really overlap each other quite a bit. And that's like the main, I would say if there's one main thing to understand about ears, it would be this concept of, and we'll find a good piece of reference to draw. Maybe we'll draw this one, this one. We'll draw a couple of these just to like give a good example of, of how these forms are really interacting with each other. Because that's really the main thing about ears is just like what are the overlaps that are occurring and how are these forms kind of constructed. So let's kind of go through some of these pieces of reference here and just kind of dissect them and break them down as we kind of go along. So it thins up quite a bit as it gets towards the antitragus. And that antitragus in turn becomes part of the lobe really. The tragus itself comes out here and usually is somewhat connected to the helix. It does the helix does have its own kind of form that goes down and rolls over, but oftentimes you'll find that this edge is kind of like connected and merging up into and then this piece of the helix sort of falls behind. But I would say that whole idea right there is even secondary to just the idea that we've got this form in the middle and this form and those two, you know, how they interact. That's the main thing to know, really. And then you can use some of that information to create your own stuff, like stuff that everybody likes to do, like elf ears and things like that, which we'll talk about a little bit in just a moment. And then we have the lobe that comes down here. Fix our drawing mistake. These basic forms of the ear are, they're helpful to know. Especially it can be really helpful for drawing the head in different perspectives. Because depending on how much of the ear you're seeing and where the ear is placed on the head, you'll really be seeing a, uh, it'll be indicating to you what perspective the head is in. Just like all the other features really, but with the ears particularly, it's kind of helpful. Okay, so on this right here, if we're gonna go ahead and draw some contour type lines on it, up, over, down, up, over, down, over, down, I find this to be the most helpful stuff when talking about ears because it just helps to show kind of what that form is. We get a little bit of a strong overlap happening here where it kind of falls back behind itself and then we get a very deeper pocket of shadow right in here. On this form we also have this little Y shape which you can't see very pronounced on him but usually that's because it goes over, down, and then over. Over, down, and then over. That gets more extreme as it rolls up to this top part. Once you really start to understand the basics of the ear, and just know that these, how these pieces kind of interact with each other. That's really the main thing. We have like a secondary plane that comes off of this as well. Probably a little more accurate to say that this goes down this way. And then on this one, and 
And the main thing to know about this right here is that it starts out a bit more planar. Where there's a bit of a, a top plane and there's a little bit of a corner right here. Then as it kind of rounds out, that corner terminates and it becomes just more of a rounded form. So oftentimes you will get a highlight that runs along this top plane here. And let's go on to, let's do this one. It's kind of a nice position. You're gonna get some good description off of this one. Again, start out with those big angles. You really can see the, how the lobe is interacting with these other pieces of information because that lobe comes in front of that helix as it gets reeled down to the bottom. I don't know if it's still called the helix when it's this far down, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, and then we've got the tragus. I can always never say that without hearing my name every time. Okay. Helix comes over and then we have the thickness of the helix that comes down. You can keep it straight on this side. So here we're seeing a bit of the opposite effect where it starts larger here and then gets smaller over here. But when we look at it from the other way, it starts larger here and then gets smaller as it goes this way because we're just looking at the form from a different angle. But again, that's happening because these forms on themselves, they go roll back and fold. There's a lot of like folding on top of each other and things like that that are sort of happening with the ears. It's partially why it makes it complicated, but again, it's like if you understand some of these basic principles, then it really does help quite a bit. Okay, so this is part of the anti-helix right here. We're really seeing that from a different angle, so we're really not seeing much of that Y shape or anything like that. Okay, we're getting the tragus. A lot of times you're gonna see a highlight on somebody's ear right here. Right here, right here and on the tragus. This is a great example of it. The reason that that's happening is because that tragus is angled at like a 45 degree angle and it oftentimes will catch light right at that point. So again, from this angle, we can really see how it very clearly, this actually does not fold over like that, how it very clearly comes down and folds back in underneath itself. And then we have that anti-helix passing it in front of the rest of the helix as it comes down. Okay. 
Okay, we've got the rest of the helix coming down into this section. Ears really are pretty strange things when you think about it. Especially, just all the shapes are very weird. But I guess they're all designed to help us here. Okay, so that lobe really connects up down into and forms where that concha is. Concha being the ear hole that helps you hear right in here. So we probably have a few adjustments to do actually with our shapes here. Okay, so all this down in here is the concha. Then we have that little plane right here that always catches light. Then we have the tragus itself. So if we were gonna go and throw some contour lines on this, Do so carefully. Put them right here as well. Actually, as it kind of goes to, goes down this way, the lines will actually start to curve the other way. Just that perspective is kind of changing. There's some more complexity happening in here with like little pieces twisting and, you know, turning over each other and making little half tones, but I'm just going to go for the big shape right now. And this one would be wrapping around as well, but I'm just not really seeing a lot of perspective on this. And I want to try to make it clear here that this shape is really coming in front of this other one. This other one is wrapping behind and continuing back this way. These lines are not meant to be like, you know, connected together because these are two separate forms. You know, the, again, this is what we're looking at. That versus this one. And then, okay, let's go to another one. What was the other one we said we were gonna do this one? I think, whoa, this is like an elf ear. That's interesting. We'll talk about those in a second. Let's just do one more of these from a different angle. You can do this one, I think get some nice overlaps happening here. Now in this one, part of his cheek is cutting off some of this other information of the tragus and stuff. He might have more full cheekbones, which could be causing that.
don't remember if I mentioned this earlier, but I think the ear really is kind of the most or the least important feature to really know. Because as long as you know just the basic shapes and forms and things, then you'll be fine. Always you want to know, like, you know, as much as you can. Especially if you're trying to do a lot of, like, invention or something like that. And you're having to invent characters from, like, you know, back views and different views and stuff and put ears on them. Being able to do these more convincing is pretty helpful. I remember seeing one of my other friends who's really good at drawing. Uh, his name is Emmanuel. And he... Uh, I remember seeing him study and breaking down ears like this one day. It's because he felt like with some of the stuff he was trying to draw, he just couldn't really, wasn't really getting it. Um, it wasn't really, <clears throat> you know, didn't really know those forms as intuitively enough. But if you just spend a little bit of time, especially as your visual library gets better and your visual remembrance of things, your your ability to recall visual information gets way way better and that results in you just remembering things a lot quicker most of the time and having to actually study them less to really get the idea which quite honestly is pretty helpful you can probably also imagine it as somebody who is a professional musician maybe and they only have to hear a piece of music once or twice before they really can remember how to play it just because they have all that technical knowledge of you know how all the chords are structured and intervals and all that kind of stuff or maybe somebody who's a, a language learner or polygot something like that and they uh you know, as they study languages in general more, I'm sure you learn tricks and techniques for memorizing stuff easier and ways to actually break down new languages that you learn quite a bit better. Okay, and then we've got the lobe coming off of that. So again, that lobe, this part, kind of separates that helix from the other part of the ear. So what we're seeing here is the lobe coming in front and that other part of the helix. Well, again, I don't know if this piece is still considered the helix. I know this whole form right here is, but I don't know if this whole like outside crest is, you know, this whole thing. And as far as rendering these goes, it's usually just uh, cylinders. <laughs> just rendering cylinders and trying to get some little half tones and shapes and things to look correct. So this person's cheek is coming in front of that here. back of their head. Then with some of this, we can use a little bit of line weight to try to enhance these overlaps a little bit more. Don't want to overdo it with that, but do you have some kind of interesting forms happening here on this one? The reference is actually cut off slightly on the My corner there, but that's okay. Hmm. 
and we don't really see the concha directly from this angle. This is more of like a straight on view, like what you'd see if you're looking at somebody directly, uh, you know, the front of their face. Whereas this is more of a three quarter situation. And this obviously is kind of like a three quarter back situation. But just to illustrate once more, the main forms that I see when I draw the ear one is this which continues down here and the other is this That's really what, what I look for mostly. And then we do have that third form, which is the, uh, you know, the lobe. That's basically, in my opinion, what you want to look for when constructing ears. Um, so let's go ahead and draw a couple of quick fantasy type ears. So to start taking some of this information and applying it in a more kind of stylistic way, it's all just about knowing the forms and having a good idea of how they sort of work. And you can start to bend some of these shapes into really whatever you want. Let's see if I can say that this will be my main kind of helix shape. down into that anti-helix. Maybe have a little bit of this overlap happening where this is basically the same, you know, this piece and this piece are of the same. It's just like as that ear goes around, goes and crests around the outside, I'm just kind of enhancing this overlap a little bit more and making this shape language a little more sharp. start to maybe define parts of the interior shadows that happen. I want to try to give those a well-designed shape as well, down into the concha area. More than anything, honestly, I'm just kind of like using the main forms and playing around with some of the shapes. And if you do that convincingly enough, then people will believe you. <laughs> kind of a lobe thing going on here. The main thing when it comes to doing this kind of stuff is you just need to design good shapes.
try to make room for a bit of a tragus right there. And not only design the overarching shapes well, like the, you know, the helix, the anti-helix, the tragus, all that, but to also design these interior shapes well, like these little shadow shapes and things that are occurring. And these little half tone, you know, right? Because a lot of times we get a little tone happening on that lobe in certain places. Usually it can look pretty cool if you try to put in like a couple of rings or something. Let's go right in the lobe. That's a bit of a kind of stylized ear. Let's do another one. Could be a good place to practice um, your design skills just to see like where your your shape knowledge is at so this is kind of more of an upright version or potentially somebody who's really looking down One thing to consider is sometimes you don't really always get the best lines by really trying to plot everything out perfectly. But almost try to let things happen more of an organic and loose way. Don't like that tragus being too square. So let's see if we can. I keep making it square. Let's go for maybe slightly more rounded kind of look. Mm -hmm. Wow, loud train. So this is kind of like that Y shape that happens. Down into some of the concha, which we really might not actually be seeing much of in this particular section. Again, that little back part of the helix coming down and being very slightly visible with the lobe overlapping that. That lobe really kind of connects down to the side of the head a little bit more.
I'm slightly referencing referencing some of those, uh, you know, some of these images up here just to see how some of these are presenting themselves. Kind of how those forms work together. And sometimes I just put even, because there's a lot of space to fill with these. Sometimes I put just even little extra shapes and things in there to give it a little more visual interest. Like this shape makes sense as like the Y, but this one is like another Y type shape that's coming down. Mm, not really what would be happening in reality, but again, this is fantasy, so we can do what we want. But it does feel good to be able to do certain things and say like, you know, well, I know that that's not really real, but I have that knowledge to say that that's not real and that I can change that and edit that and you know do those things if i want so yeah practice drawing some ears to do your uh practice your shape design probably the one thing that they're really good for, to be quite honest. A little bit of hair tufts and things happening. But yeah, so just a little bit of knowledge of those forms really does go a long way. Try to pay attention to those main things that I proposed there. One uh, ear that I really liked how it came out. I thought this one was pretty well done. I really like this character that I came up with that was based off of a sketch from a while ago. But um, there's a pretty good example as well of just, you know, simple sticking to those main forms, that big shape on top, and then the uh, anti-helix in the middle. If we really break this down, there's really no tragus there, uh, or maybe it's being obscured by the beard. We do have a lobe. Uh, we do have something that you can do to kind of make your designs a little bit more interesting is kind of cut a few little chunks out of it. So you kind of get this like, uh, almost like worn leather kind of thing like this guy's seen some battles you know because his ear has been chopped up in certain parts um so with that that stuff you can do that and that works particularly well on like certain parts of the uh the helix here and these shapes, you don't really want to make them too round necessarily. They want to be a little bit more geometric, I'd say. A little more of a kind of straight shape design. You can just add a little bit of visual interest and mystique to the character.
So two interesting different takes on kind of some shape design with this, um, where this one is a little bit more kind of like angular and has a little bit more of a uh, almost like industrial designed type design to it. And one like this is a little bit more big, rounded, floofy kind of design. And we can maybe even make that more so if we cut off this top part. And make this very rounded, much more rounded towards the, uh, the kind of apex of that point. So yeah, that's all, you know, really when it comes down to it, it's all just shape design stuff. And um, you'll get better at that the more that you do. But pretty fun to draw, honestly. It's kind of fun to do just like character designs and make something a little bit more fantastical. But sometimes it can be a little lame as well. It's like, oh, this is my fantasy painting of this character and it's like what's well, fantasy about it it's like ah she has elf ears <laughs> to me that's kind of just like really like you couldn't come up with anything else um so maybe just kind of be careful about that when you're uh you know but in your sketchbook or whatever who cares i've got plenty of characters uh, like that in my sketchbook that's just you know me doodling around and not really paying too much mind or attention to any of that um, yeah so both of these are, are kind of cool I think and hopefully that helps you a little bit just kind of uh, get a good sense of you know how to start utilizing some of this information to push it and pull it and bend it in different ways so yeah, that's ears. A little bit shorter, but that's okay because there's not really too much to talk about. Question mark.